and our team's resolve and ability to just battle every single night. Um, you know, there's been some different things over these last five games that have, that have shown up, but I thought our team tonight played the way we want to play. And I thought our transition defense was very good protecting the basket. I thought defensively we did a good job of really making the Kings work. They hit, I think it was five threes in the first quarter. <clears throat> a couple of them in transition when we covered up the basket and they kicked it out and made some tough ones. And, you know, had 35 in that quarter. I thought our defense for the remainder of the game was actually really solid on both ends. There's obviously, you know, we could all pick out plays that weren't well executed, but on the whole, I thought our defense was good tonight. And, you know, the Kings are a talented team. We went 13 for 44 from three tonight, which obviously didn't help. I thought another night where we got a bunch of good looks and our team executed the way we wanted to. Um, you know, 16 turnovers definitely hurt us. We had some some tough ones throughout the game, but you know, our team continues to to just stick with it no matter how the game's going. I thought we executed well down the stretch, with the exception of our defense on the last play. And um, yeah, really, really proud of our team and how they continue to battle. I thought, um, you know, outside of making a few shots, I thought they deserved to win the game tonight. I thought their approach was great. I thought their intensity was great. I thought the way they executed and moved and played played with each other was uh, was what we're looking for. And so it's on us to continue to maintain that that mentality and uh, get out on the road. Aaron had. 22 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, how much of that was just tough shot making from him versus shots you may have looked like to see? Yeah, he, he hit a bunch of mid-range floater, half fadeaway free throw line jump shots, which are shots that we're, we're willing to live with. The last play he got on the rim, which hurt us a lot. A couple of plays before that, we botched a switch and he was able to get a dunk. But outside of those two plays at the basket, I thought he made a lot of shots over defenders in that middle area of the court, which with a player like Fox, that's what you're trying to make him do. He's, uh, he's a really talented scorer and you can't press up too far into him or else he's going right by you, uh, as we saw in the last play. So. He's a heck of a player, and uh, he's a he's a premier guard in this league, and he showed that tonight with uh, a lot of that shot making in the fourth quarter. But you know, f outside of those those two plays I just mentioned, um, I think he hit his only three in the fourth quarter as well, right in front of our bench. But for the most part, I thought that we made him play in that middle area, and you know, credit to him, he made them all. The last play with point four left, is that something you guys have worked on? Or was that just instinct <laughs> in the moment? That's all in the moment. Um, you know, we've worked on some full court sets, but it's hard when the ball goes in for everybody to get lined up. I thought Lowry made a break full court and Vando threw a great pass. And um, I wish we had a few more tenths there to, to get that shot off. but. You know, it's just a, that's a tough break, but, um, you know, a heads up play from the guys to not give in and for Lowry to, to go full court and for us not to settle shooting a 90 foot touch shot. When you lose, you know, five consecutive losses by 15 points, three of them are game winners, um, you know, what's the, um, you know, what's the spirit of the team? You know, how do you, as a coach, how do you keep the spirits high? Yeah, it hurts. Situations. It hurts right now, and it should. And losing sucks, and if losing doesn't hurt, you shouldn't be here. So um, I expect for our team, our coaching staff, to, to hurt when we lose these close games. But at the same time, it's on us the next day to, to look it in the face and look at the film, understand things we can do better. Um, you know, as our team continues to learn how to win consistently. But, um, you know, I, when you look at a five game stretch and you could put together eight plays total in five games that if they went the other way, you're on a five game winning streak. Um, you know, the, the margin between winning and losing in this league is very, very, 
thin as we're seeing. And so it's on us to just maintain, you know, a consistency of our approach, a consistency of our message, um, to not be too emotional. Because again, uh, emotion is unproductive. When we go back and look at this, it's easy to, to get mad and <clears throat> get really frustrated that you're losing. But, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta take some of the hurt of losing and then look the game in the face and figure out what each of us can do better you know, myself included, and move forward. You mentioned that you didn't love the defense that was played on Fox on the what proved to be the game-winning basket. What would you ideally like to have seen happen there defensively? Uh, I would like to not see the fastest player in the gym go to his left hand and shoot a layup. Um, Lowry's seven feet tall, so he probably shouldn't be standing above the three-point line guarding the fastest player in the gym. And... You know, we let him get to his left hand. Vando was going to double from the nail. Um, but Lowry's stance was just a little bit open, and he was able to get to his left hand. You know, the another situation where you're in the bonus, and so you have to be perfect with your angles, because if not, you really can't go make a play with your hip at all, because if Fox gets a bump and goes down, he's shooting two free throws, and we didn't even make him make a basket. Uh, and then the weak side, you know, we have to sell out when Fox drives and trust that your teammate's going to make that secondary help. But, you know, it's when you're guarding a player with that level of athleticism, it's it's little things. It's, you know, six, eight inches here and your stance is five degrees too open and he just takes advantage of it and bursts to his left hand. So, um, you know, it's something we'll, we'll look at as we continue to to learn about these late game situations but you know I was more bothered by the three back cuts we gave up in the fourth quarter prior to that um, you know that, that put us in that position you gave Ochai some playing time in the first half uh, why did you do that and, and what have you seen from his development this season yeah I just I think it's I think it's time that Ochai you know finds finds some minutes I think he's worked really really hard I think he's done a great job with Scott, our G League coach, and their staff, you know, when he's been down there getting minutes to, you know, learn how to be a pro and understand how he can help our team. Um, you know, we need his physicality. We need his athleticism, especially on the defensive end. And, you know, Ochai's embraced that. I thought the two threes he, he took tonight were good ones. Um, I thought those were the right shots to take, and he understands that, you know, he has the freedom to, to shoot those shots if, if the ball finds him for a catch and shoot and continue to just compete and play hard. So, um, you know, was was happy with his play in the in the first half overall. And um, it's hard to to have gone that long without being in the rotation, so to speak. And then you're getting real minutes, you know, in the first half of a close game against a good team. Um, and I thought he handled himself great. Thank you. Thanks, guys.